Just an old sweet song Blowing through the pines I wonder what could have been on my mind On my mind I was such a fool Couldn't tell when love was true Now I know my dream has always been you, always you. Heaven was as near as your fingertips. Paradise as near as your ruby lips. Go. You'd be a handy man to have down home, round a farm. Oh, don't you ever let up, Mother. You're just like a broken record. The South ain't backwards no more. Take my family down south and have them at the mercy of who knows what? A man is helpless Mother, we have down. Darlene's room all fixed up for you. Why don't you come on, stretch out for a little while? And I want you kids to be quiet. Well, I feel just fine. Just for a little while, Mama, it will make me feel fine. Darlene, set the table for me a little, honey. Go help your sister. Now, see if you can tell me which one. Mm. You don't recognize that little girl there in the middle? That's your mother on her 12th birthday. <laughs> I was determined to give her that party no matter what <laughs> before she would be leaving me. I thought I missed you, boy. Now I want you to get out of here and let your grandma get some rest. Oh, Mom. Oh, Mom. She's going to be here for a whole week. Got plenty of time to wear her out. I'm guilty, darling. <laughs> you caught me red-handed, didn't you? <laughs> if your appetite's good, maybe I'll forgive you. Oh, well, thank you, Mother. That's your own recipe. I'm glad you like it. Oh. How about another slice? Oh, no, don't give me no more. <laughs> more coffee, Nate? Yeah, babe. Okay. Excuse me. Grandma, mm. have you ever seen a chain gang? Yes, child. I've seen them. Were you ever on a chain gang, Grandma? No, child. <laughs> yeah, well, you never catch me south of that old Mason-Dixon line. Dad's never been south in his life. Junie. You all ought to come down. See what you're missing. <laughs> What's that? I just felt a little dizzy. No, I think you better lie down. Uh -huh. Come on. Hey, Dad, can I go over by the school? Yeah. Be back in here by 11 o'clock. And don't go get in no mess with your slick buddy. <laughs> That's right. Simmons my name. Plumbing's the game. Well, we aim to please, and that's for sure. I tell you what, I'm going to give you my special $5 off introductory offer. Of course, since it's an evening call, that'll be $5 extra. Uh, I know, I know, that puts you right back where you started from. But after all, it is an evening call.
just think. Might more noise than I'm used to at night. I pockets was just walking the last time you was down home. Nine years. You know, Priscilla, it's been a long time. Letters ain't filling. You are always welcome to come up. You know how it is down there, Mother. You sent me up to Aunt Mame, God bless her soul, to get me away from it. But it was different then. I wanted you to have a good life. I do, Mother. Nate has a good job. And he hustles extra plumbing work at night and on the weekend. And I'm the supervisor of my typing pool. Now, that's a good job, Mother. We're moving up. It pains me to see you living in a tight little place like this. Down home, you already got a home. Mother, don't you understand that black folks up here hate the South? I'm black. You still live down there. To black people up here, the South is it's just a nightmare. A nightmare. We want to get away from it. Hen party? Scared me. <laughs> I guess an old rooster can come, too. <laughs> Thank you. What's happening? Well, the noise. Mother can't get to sleep. Oh, well, this sounds like a job for superstar. Just so happens that I am carrying my special guaranteed 100% uh, sleeping potion. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> with Nate being able to work with his hands and your high school diploma, it seems like you could most likely do better down home. <laughs> Yes, Mama. Why don't I go and give Nate a hand? Scooby doo ba doo ba doo ba doo 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 Mama? Get a doctor, get a doctor. What is it, Mom? What is it? All right. No doctor. No doctor. Nate! Daddy? It's okay, baby. Nate! Nate! No, no doctor. Mama. Mm -hmm. You all right? Mm -hmm. What was it? No doctor. No doctor. Mm -hmm. Nothing a doctor can do when a body's just got old and worn out. <laughs> That's why I came, daughter. I wanted to see you one last time. Don't talk like that. And to see your children. My one regret is they didn't get a chance to visit me down on the farm. Now, I don't rightly know if I'll ever see it again. I'll go, Grandma. Don't die, Grandma. Oh, I'm all right, baby. Sit with your grandma. It's all right. It's just so hot and close up here. Visit your grandma. whole lot better just being around the things that she knows, you know? I won't be gone long, and I'm sure the kids won't be any trouble to you. I know they won't, because they're going to be down south, too. Look, I still don't like the south. I hate what the word Dixie does to my insides. But I love you, Prissy. And we're family. So we're all going to go. You do that for me, Nate. Oh, it's probably all right. 
I think somebody invented a machine to pick cotton, didn't they? <laughs> Everybody, we are going south for two weeks. All right. I don't hey. Know. Honey, what you crying for? You gonna flood the place? I'm happy. Besides, it's okay. I'm married to a plumber, ain't I? <laughs> something to mama. She's in there cooking. It's ridiculous. From the sick bed to the kitchen. Grandma. Daddy, you said a bad word. I heard Daddy's running over. You just got here. There. Now, everything can take care of itself for a while. Grandma. I stopped the flood, but uh, that commode needs to be replaced. I know. <laughs> Come on, dear. Oh, Mother, this is your room. It's a beautiful room, Grandma. Are you sure we're not putting you out? Oh, it'll be nice being next to the kitchen. I'm closer to everything there. Afraid you're gonna miss something, Miss Nosy? Mm, that's some truth in there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boys. I'll show you where you're gonna stay. Come on. Come on. Oh, Nate, you can't do that to her. It's such a room. And she wants you to have it, because she loves you. Oh, Grandma, it's beautiful. This would have been your mother's room when she got to be a young lady like you are now. Enjoy it, sweetheart. Get yeah, Ben, <laughs> down here, we get to sleep outside. <laughs> They're on the sleeping porch. Wait, she's going to be just asleep. Mm -hmm. Take that one out. It's been a long time since this old house been filled with such happiness. <laughs> Your father, God rest his soul, would have been mighty proud of this family you got yourself. Mighty proud. <laughs> going off and set up housekeeping somewhere else. <laughs> Here. Go ahead. Come on. Come on, I'll take you all down to the creek. Come on. Well, I'll see you later. That's your car? That's right. It's a real nice machine. I'm Sheriff Harper. Hey, you must have really been burning rubber. Howdy. Howdy. Joe. Joe Mayfield. Cousin Joe? I'm afraid so. <laughs> Nate Simmons. See, that's just what I tell you. Now, see, this here is my aunt's son-in-law from up in Detroit. Now, that makes him my uh, cousin-in-law? Something like that. <laughs> hey, Sheriff, it was over by my place looking for a sharecropper ran out on his debt. Got a call about somebody being over here. I figured it was Aunt Maddie back home. Well, sir, now, 
She said she's gonna bring y'all back down here. <laughs> well, sir. Guess you still ain't found that share, Trapper. Well, I guess I will, but I hope I don't. That old boy, he'll never be able to pay his debt. Yeah. Not the way old Silas keeps his book. Yeah, well, now tell me something. How did he do it? He sent his wife and baby up north on vacation. Then he just walked away from it. I'm checking the bus depot and the train station. I gotta go down to five points. I'll see y'all later. Yeah, you be good, Nasha. All right. What was that all about? All that buddy buddy stuff. Yeah, I guess somebody calling the law instead of looking the other way, like to do in Detroit, do seem kind of backward to you, huh? Oh, no, no, don't get me wrong. I didn't mean Yeah, let me get on in here and see. I ain't mad at like the big city. Excuse me for one minute. Yeah, well, so when the last time Priscilla was down here? Excuse me, Joe. Excuse yes, ma'am. Mama, there's a man in the kitchen with some slop. Oh, Pete. Pete Davis. Oh. Got ten kids and lots of table scraps. Oh, be a good girl, honey, and feed the pigs while Pete visits with me and your cousin Joe for a spell. You don't mind, do you, honey? Oh, no. Of course not, Mama. Chauffeur. I didn't mean it that. Well, who needs you? Which way is town? Yeah. 
get a load of that Braves game last night? And that's another thing I don't want to hear nothing about. Hot enough for you this morning? Too hot. It sure is a scorcher, all right. No. No what? Well, you're a new face, but no, you ain't the sharecropper what took it on the land. What can I do for you? Well, I'm doing some plumbing in general and putting in a new commode in particular. Getting out some old pipes and putting in some new ones, but I ain't got nothing to work with. And even less money. Think you can help me? Well, I don't rightly know if I ought to. You see, you stepping on my toes. Now, I'm the plumber around these parts. Is that a fact? Whose business you thinking about stealing away from me? Now, if it's Louise Armstrong, I'd be mighty tempted to give you them supplies for free. I'm sorry, I don't know the lady. It's my mother-in-law, Mrs. Maddie Griffin. Oh, yeah, I'm Nick Claypool's. That's right. You a plumber? Plumbing's my game. Simmons, the name. And if there's a way to get those supplies for free, I'll go for it. Well, now, we just might be able to work out a little deal. Kind of like uh, one doctor taking out another doctor's appendix as a professional courtesy. I'll have to let you know later who got the better end of the deal. Turn the water back on. Everything's pretty bad under here. Let's get nuts, bolts. Draw some water from the pump. I don't need it for washing. Well, I'll be at least 15 minutes. Go to the outhouse. 15 minutes? What do you mean, 15 minutes? You said that an hour ago you'd be through in 15 minutes. Now, that catalog got just about every kind of flower you could possibly think of. Oh, this is it. These are the ones I like, Grandma. Oh, you sure are in luck, sugar plum. Ask Trunk. To show you that scraggly verbena patch he have started for me. If you dig them up and set them in a new pad, they'd be pretty as a picture in no time. Oh, thank you, Grandma. <laughs> you like it down here? Would you like to stay? I mean, for a long time. Probably a coat whip. Sometime they get nosy round noon. Look, if I can face town, I know you can face a little old snake. <laughs> I'll tell you something. I'll trade you. Any day. <laughs> I'm glad you saw him coming back from the outhouse, or we would have had some extra laundry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you can say that again. <laughs> Come in a can, you know. I know. Mama, what are we doing here? Huh. Come in a plastic bag already cut, and they even come frozen. Ah, Junie. This is only the first day. Why don't you give yourself a break? Besides, if you think your little old mama and daddy deserve a little raise. This place is a wasteland, Mom, and you know it. The rejects stayed behind, and only those who couldn't make it on the outside came back. Something on your mind, son? I got a job over at Mr. Claypool's. I met him this morning in the woods. He offered me a job at his farm, doing chores. It's a real job, Dad. He said I asked my folks. Mom said it's okay with her, it's okay with you. You know, a job isn't something you play with, son. Because the people who pay you money depend on you. And your mother can't go to work for you like she ended up taking care of your puppy that time. I'll do a good and honest job, Dad. I will. Good and honest. 
You know, finding your own job is a mighty enterprising thing to do. I'm very proud of you. Okay, you can take it. <laughs> and don't forget to tell them you'll only be here for two weeks. Oh, Helen, you've been a long time. Girl, you look good. Yeah, look at here, though. Look at here. Julie? Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. You know, the last time I saw you, you were bigger than a minute. Now look how grown and pretty you are. Yeah, oh. and chirping at the bit to talk to your children about the north. I you? bet. Where are you? There they are. Oh. See ya. Oh, listen, I hear Grandma Griffin's been poorly. Oh, Helen, you know how that is. Up one day, down the next. I think it was a trip that did it to her, though. Mm -hmm. Feel a whole lot better. Mm. She sure gonna feel good if she sees you. <laughs> Hey, man, what's anybody done to you anyway, huh? Man, don't give me that innocent jive. Just what kind of country turkey you take me for anyhow? Look, you got a problem being a country boy? That's your hang-up. Don't hang that responsibility on me, because I ain't done nothing to you. Oh, I'll tell you what you did, all right. Now, you come down here showing off your big fancy car and your city way this and city way that. I mean, what do you think, you're a missionary, Buana? We don't need you to come down here and bring us the big news that radio just been invented. I get it now. I'm putting you down because you own your own land and your own house. And ain't got no boss telling you how many times a day to go to the toilet. Man, that car is the only thing I own. You dig it? And I don't even own that. Look, the North ain't nothing to write home about either, good brother. Now, give me some of that tuna. You know, she cherishes everything in this house. Been saving it for you, hoping you'd come back and take it all over. You know how old folks have their dreams. Uh -huh. Well, things have changed some. Helen, mm -hmm. Mama knows that we have our life in Detroit now. It's a good life, and we can't just pick up and leave. Mm -hmm. Say, where's your youngest baby? Leroy Quentin. Uh huh. Girl, he's so big, he's working. I must admit, it's nice not to have to worry about your kids every time they're out of sight. In the city, I gotta watch them like a hawk. I mean, there are some crazy people in the city. What? Mm-hmm. He's doing some chores at Mr. Claypool, a neighbor, and he is as proud of that job as he can be. Well, you don't say. Mm-hmm. But Adam Claypool hasn't hired a boy to do chores around his place since... Since what? Well, since the last boy got hurt working over there. Hurt how? They said the boy was in the kitchen playing with Claypool's old birdshot rifle. He shouldn't have been in there playing with it in the first place. Anyway, they said it went off accidental. Killed him. Claypool hasn't hired anybody around there since. I know that hot pockets wouldn't be messed with no one. I know he knows better than to be bothered with you pass like that. Maybe it wasn't an accident. What? Lord, there's some crazy people living in the country, too. Nate! 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 What's the matter? What? Hurry, Wait a minute. Come on. Oh, oh, boys, working over at Claypool. Oh, shucks. That was an accident. Come on. What was the matter? That was an accident. Come on. I told you ain't nothing to worry about. Come on. Now, I am not moving an inch until somebody tells me what's going on. A few years back, a kid shot himself over at Claypool. You know how folks is. They start rooming that maybe it wasn't no accident. Around about the time them three civil rights workers got killed. People just wasn't believing nothing white folks had to say it in. White. White? Come on. I told you it was an accident. You better go too, sweetheart.
Come on over here, son. Why don't you try a little, uh, try a little water here? He ain't fired, is he, Abner? No. No, no, no. Why aren't you going home? You've had as rough a day as any new farmhand could be expected to deal with. I shouldn't have known I got the wrong hand because of the way the rooster came at me. It was my mistake. No, oh, no, no. I'll do it. I'll do it. But uh, next time you pay attention to what you're doing, huh? Remember I told you not to mess with a setting hen and the eggs she was hatching? I ought to be putting them back instead of you. Oh, Abner. No, no, everything's going to be all right. Now, why don't you go in the house if you can't stand to watch? But, but I, there's nothing I can do to stop the boy from doing what he's got to do. I'll stand nearby, but that's all I can do. Claypool. That boy over yonder, that's my nephew twice removed to some such nonsense since his mother is my cousin. Uh, Priscilla Simmons and Nate Simmons, Mr. Claypool. Howdy. Uh, Helen and Julie, they over there, ain't mad, it's waiting on us. We came back to pick him up so they can get a chance to meet him. My regards to your ma. Good seeing you again, Miss Claypool. Hi, Miss Claypool. I do. Always folks come to get him. Man, when I was thinking about getting that worm farm started, wasn't nobody as helpful me as that man back there, Abner Claypool. He helped me to get all the information I needed to get going. <laughs> What's that? A worm farm? <laughs> you heard me right, man. A worm farm. Lay it on me, baby. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I can't stop laughing. It's all right. <laughs> hey, but I'm interested, honest. How in the devil do you farm worms? Didn't. Started to. What happened? <laughs> it's a low capital business, so that wasn't a problem. Let me tell you something. It's a good idea. And there's a lots of money to be made in it, and ain't no expense necessary. You don't say. Yeah, your crop doubles in 60 days. Once I got it off the ground, I could handle it alone, but starting from scratch and handling the farm got to be too much. I like to pair of hands. You needed another body, huh? Yep. Are you, uh, Still interested in the idea? Mm -hmm. Interested? Are you kidding? Does a mule kick? <laughs> you dog all right? I'm interested. Give me something. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, Dana, could you gonna build a worm farm? Mm. Less than two weeks. Mm. Oh, Mama, where the aspirin? Oh, I can't stand another minute of it. Let me rub your head like I always did. <laughs> well, it's just a question of a little extra manpower and a few bucks investment to get everything going. And in a few days, we get the first shipment of worms in, and after that, it just ain't no telling. <laughs> Here's to us, partner. Long live worms. Right on. Long live worms. Worms. Now, the main job right now is building them first bins. Get us 
a little canvas and we build a, a little tent over them, you know, sort of protect them in case some bad weather comes. And then we get the breeding saw and the manure mixed up and we put that on in together. By that time, the worm beat them got here, and so we put them on in. And now, the thing you gotta remember now, we gotta keep them moist. And, and then we start another batch of bins, because they gonna double. And when they double, we have to split them up with half going in the new bins, or either being sold. The wholesalers, they either sell them to the fishermen and the farmers. Man, would you know, millions of worms a year sold that way. What's the matter, son? Can I go back to work for Mr. Claypool? You know, I was taught never to trust a white man as far as I could throw him. I guess maybe I was too hasty. You can go back to work if you want to. You know, white folks up north, a little too hypocrite. So you never really know who your enemies are. Down here, at least you know where you stand. I took some lumps in my day. Ain't we all? You know, Joe, you were right. I guess I was a little oversensitive. Hey! Winston told me to tell you that he got a, another plumbing job for you. <laughs> <laughs> he sure stuck it to me on that Louise Armstrong deal. <laughs> yeah. Next time I'm gonna carry my earplugs. <laughs> hey, boy. We done finished with this, sir. Hey there, sir. How you doing? Can I answer you in any of these fellas here? Well, the only thing I'm in the market for today is a runaway sharecropper. Hi there, sheriff. Well, I think he's still in this neck of the woods. Uh-huh. I'm gonna see y'all later. All right, man. you off there, am I, sir? Oh, no, no, no. I got a date with a little lady. <laughs> Oh, look. Oh, enough. I give. You win. Oh, this is fun, Daddy. <laughs> uh, Daddy, can I tell you something? What? It's nice to walk with you. I like it here because I get to walk with you. Did you kill that boy? No, I didn't. Did she kill that boy? Of course not. Where are you going? To go get me something to work with, like you. What about your folks? They know you're over here? They said I could come back to work if I wanted to. Good morning, Aunt Maddie. Oh, hi, Sudan. Good morning, Grandma. Hi. Breakfast, girl. Grandma, you should see the Rubina. Sprouting new buds and leaves and everything. <laughs> well, it ain't no miracle, sweetheart. Two weeks, anything be looking up. <laughs> if you was going to stay longer, I might be out there weeding with you. Don't you go rushing things, Mama. <laughs> oh, Mama, I hate to leave. I hate to see you go. Now, don't you start that again, Mama. Come on, we've had two marvelous weeks, and we have two more days to go. But our life is up there. We can't stay here and vegetate. Come on. <laughs> I hate to leave, too, but Junior's got all his stuff packed already. You better get out of here and go to work. You're going to spoil your perfect record. Bye. Bye. Look like we're getting our first bit of rain today. And the looks of it, it's really going to blow. You know, there's nobody home at Joe's today. I think I'll go take a look-see at the worms.
see it. Come here, sit by me. I got something to show you. Okay. Now, follow my finger and see if you can see the little dip. Wow, it really does look like a dip. Now, that last star in the handle is the North Star. That's the one the slaves followed North to freedom. <laughs> well, it wasn't slavery those dudes were running from. It was these man-eating mosquitoes. Hey! Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, Puddin. Get a little too cool out here for you, Mama. Hey, hey what's happening? Let's go in, huh? Good night. Good night, Grandma. Good night, Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Good night, Grandma. Good night, Grandma. Get dinner's in the oven, honey. I'll get it as soon as I finish. Oh, no, baby. That's okay. I'll get it. I wish I may. I wish I might. Have this wish I make tonight. You know what I wish? I wish that we could stay. <clears throat> well, no wishes for me, because mine's about to come true. See that old North Star over there? Well, we're going to be following it home day after tomorrow. Looks like you win, Darlene. Looks like we'll all be staying for a little while. What? Yeah. Well, we weren't quite ready for the storm. It wrecked a lot of our work. We lost some worms, too. It'll take about a Jimmy. week, maybe even closer to the two, before things will be like we want it. Yeah, well, I'm going back. I can take care of myself. Most of my friends are on their own anyway. No, son. We'll all go together or stay together. OK, Nate, if it's that important to you, I'll... I'll try to square things. Why don't I call and see if I can get some sick leave? It is, honey, and I'll do the same. It's the difference between making this thing work or blowing it. There's a lot of money in it, too. And Joe's going to be sending me $50 a month as my share. It'll help us to get the kids through school and things. Yeah, well, even if we stay here and get that worm farm back on its feet, what says that country bumpkin can keep it going? Now, I don't allow no disrespect, Junie. I can take care of myself, Dad. Honest, I can make it. Yeah, I've seen how you make it. No, the city's no place for you to be alone. Yeah, sounds like Grandma. Oh, yes, I'm the great pretender. You're skating on thin ice, boy. What? Are you all blind? Can't you see she hasn't been sick a day since we got down here? She's laying there propped up in bed, pulling the strings, and we are her dancing puppets. You know it as well as I do, but you won't say nothing. Now, that's enough, Nathaniel. I'm not going to listen to any more of this. OK, Junie, listen. It's just a matter of another couple of weeks, and it shouldn't make that much difference. Can't you see that's the way she planned it? Stay a while, then a while longer, then a little while longer. It's a trick, a dirty, rotten trick. Now, you just wait a minute. Don't be upset, honey. Please. Nate. Hmm? Did you need to come in? I haven't heard him yet, baby. Don't worry. What kind of trouble can he get into down here anyway? None, I suppose. You suppose? You'd be worried sick if he was back in Detroit. Oh, Nate, that has nothing to do with it, here or there. It's midnight, and he's not home yet. And I suppose it's my fault, huh, for being tough on him. Are you taking up him for sassing about your mother? I'm not talking about his sass. I'm talking about what's bugging him. I mean, he was disappointed. He was expecting to get back to civilization. I mean, I can understand that, can't you? <laughs> Two weeks can seem like forever. You know how it is when you're young? Well, not only when you're young, it sounds like to me. Oh, Nate, stop it. Stop it, please.
Yes, I suppose I am looking forward to getting back to Detroit, too. And yes, I, I don't worry about him as much down here. So, it's like I said, he can't get into any trouble as long as he's down here. Pretend you don't hear me calling you, boy. Come in here. You leaving? Yes. Yes, ma'am. What you plan to do? Go back home, up north. Find work, make it on my own. There's work for you here, son. Well, if you got your mind made up, I'm not going to try to stop you. Lost the best friend I ever had, trying to stop her from doing something when her mind was made up. Look over there, under that scarf on the bureau. Ought to be five dollars there. Take it. Aren't you going to do something? Yeah, I'm going to finish my breakfast. Daddy, if you left now, you could probably catch him. Yes, darling, I probably could if I knew which roads to take. My son is out on the road hitchhiking. Heaven knows what can happen to him. And you Priscilla, sitting... Priscilla, hitchhiking, it'll take Junie at least two days. I'll leave tomorrow. Grandma, why didn't you tell him not to go? It wasn't my place to do that. Mama, all you had to do was to call me or Nate. The world can be so cruel. That's right. And he'll find out. I've been looking all over for you, man. We better get on down the road before it gets too hot. Don't reckon I'll be taking that drive up to Detroit with you, Mr. Nate. But that's not what you told me last night. You know how I got this name? Because I was always talking about packing up my trunk and going off to the promised land. Make something out of myself up there. Get educated, work. A real good life. No ends to what a man can do up north. Now I can go, just like that, while you go see about your boy. And in style, too. In that big, pretty car. You know what? I walked around these old fields last night thinking, down there by the creek in the woods. And I said to myself, You're too old to be chasing dreams. Plus, you're just plain scared. Well, I ain't afraid of what I'll find, you see. Well, sir, 
just afraid to see all that I miss. And I just don't want to know about that no more. Just don't. J.T. Dunbar, ex-sharecropper, Cincinnati Bar. <laughs> 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 smiling at what she hopes you have in your wallet, not you. What you mean, find a job? Well, I sent him down on H Street. At least it's an honest day's work. Honest? Well, the last time I saw him, he had a TV and trying to sell it. Oh, that Junior. No, man, he ain't here. What'd he do? I didn't so see. Why are you asking me anyway? I ain't no fence. Hey, look, man. If you see him again, just tell him I want to talk to him, okay? Look. I ain't bought nothing off of him. I ain't the Western Union either. But I'll do it. Come on now. Everything gonna be all right. I sure hope so. Probably gonna show up tonight. Tomorrow for sure. Hustle, mister. I hear you've been selling TVs. One TV, Dad. Only one. I had to eat. Well, that's one too many. I didn't raise you to be no thief. I didn't steal it, Dad. Don't lie to me. You pawned a TV, didn't you? A lot of people saw you. I didn't tell them I stole it. When I pawned it, they just sort of assumed I did. I just didn't tell them I didn't steal it. You're lying, man. I want to know, where'd you get it? Right there. It was my 
mine. You gave it to me for Christmas last year. I had this nightmare I'd never see anyone again. You could have come back, son. What do you want me to say? I wanted you to say, go find things out for yourself. I will, someday, not yet. Finding out isn't always outside. It's like charity. It begins right at home. I suppose I should have talked to you sooner. I guess I hoped you'd find that out on your own, down home, down south, I mean. The city glitters so much. The truth is just hard to find, hard to see. A lot of times I was scared. I thought it was down home that was bothering me. But it wasn't down or up or anywhere. I know. Just like I said, it's inside. You all right, son? I'm all right, Dad. I'm all right. Hey, Julie, you should have seen your cousin Joe. Shut up! Man, will you shut up? Jeez, Joe, you see this country boy? Yeah, look at that. Looks like we got company, don't we? What's going on? Isn't that your car? That's your pickup truck. Yeah, yeah. What are they doing up there? Grandma's dead, Junior. She loved you, Junior. Church ladies auxiliary will take care of all the cooking and that kind of thing. Thank you so much. I don't know what I would have done. I'm sorry. This is my husband, Nate. How do you do? Thank you. No, no, somebody else died to see you. Excuse me. I just wanted to tell you how deeply sorry I am for your grief. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. I never had nothing but respect for your ma and for your father, too, when he was alive. I, I just want you to know that. She was a rock in a weary land. Shining beacon, a safe harbor. Shelter from the storm. And now she's been gathered unto the master to rest. And the Lord knows his own. You know? He knows his own. And he knew that she was tired. And he said, come home, Sister Maddie. Come home and take your rest. Rest with me. And you know she didn't mind going. 
For when you are with the Lord, you're not afraid. You're not afraid of man or beast. You're not afraid of life nor death. Heaven is your reward for belonging to the Lord. Amen. Sister Maddie, she's there right now, resting at the right hand of Jesus. Amen. Priscilla? Who's that old woman? Oh, that's, uh, Mama's old sister, Mother Velvet. Mama wanted to see her one time before she died and Helen drove all night till she could get her before the end. I'm glad she could make it. Sure was a nice funeral. That's your man, Priscilla? Yes, Aunt Velvet, that's it. Yes, sir. I wasn't going to come. Maddie sent me away, you know. She had to send for me before I'd come back. I'm glad she did. What was it, Aunt Velvet? I mean, were you mad at her? Was she mad at you? Not really. Not after so many years. Christian person can't stay mad. I guess we just got old, sort of set in our ways. Our Stone here. Sorry to bother you folks so soon after the internment, but you're not local people from around here. I didn't know how long you'll be staying. I'm Mrs. Griffin's lawyer. This is the deceased's last will and testament, leaving the farm to Mrs. Priscilla Simmons. I'm Mrs. Simmons. When you put the place up for sale, I'll be glad to help you. I sell real estate around here, too. We'll call you when we need you. Good day. Selling the farm. Takes a lot of nerve come talking business at a time like this. Dying is a part of life. Just like living. If y'all don't mind, I thought I might visit a week or two. You wasn't even born, Priscilla, last time I saw this place. Now I can't see, I'd sort of like to feel it. Are you all right? Are you uh, hurt? I'm all right. Table out of the way. Wait just a cotton picking minute. Leave the table where it is. You ladies may not know it, but if you keep moving things around so I won't hurt myself, I'm going to go right on breaking my neck. Soon as I learn where something is, you all decide it's in the way and move it. Then I stumbles over it. Y'all like the way the room looks. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Since I would like to stay alive for the week I'm going to be here, I wish one of y'all would show me where everything is. Then leave it alone. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Nate, I left you out of this, but that was not because I didn't know you was here. <laughs> Well, sir, I guess things sort of changed now, huh? Uh, I don't know. Well, when y'all sell the place, you'll have enough money to start your own business up north. Well, everything's been happening so fast since we got back, I haven't had a moment alone to talk to Priscilla. But that is something to think about, all right? Let me help you with this. Okay. I can understand that, all right. Stone's car over there. 
You met him yet? Yeah, yesterday, after the funeral. He uh, brought Priscilla the deed. Mm. Better hear on home, boy. If you done sold that place right off from under you. <laughs> too hard on him. At least he recognized the great job I did on the roof. I should have known you'd say that. Mama? Mm-hmm? What are we going to do with this place? Well, I'm certainly not planning to keep it. That'd be dumb. <laughs> well, I remember when Maddie, your mama, first come to this place. I she hadn't been married more than a year. And this house was filled with love and happiness. Yes, sir. A lot of love. Just like it is now. There ain't nothing better than a house full of love. I missed your warm bod. I thought you was asleep. Heavy thoughts? Mm -hmm. Well, the worms are doing okay. I'm happy for you, hon. Worms. <laughs> Still seems so funny to me. You know, I told you about Junior, but I never got to talk to you about the city. The city wasn't all I remembered it to be. It's different if you have money. When I... when I sell the farm, you can start your own business, be your own boss. Life is so much better down here, especially for the kids. And I'm my own boss already. And no treadmills. What about Junior? Well, he can finish school down here, and then it's his decision. North, college, whatever. Well, there's nothing for me down here. I miss the treadmill. At least in the city I had some kind of career going. And me, you lived for the hustle. No, baby, I hustled to live. Now, this new South probably isn't all it's cracked up to be, but it's better than it used to be. <laughs> it's different, that's <laughs> for sure. You know, I wonder if the kids really understood why Mama sent me away. All they seem to know is now. Thank God now is better. You really want to stay, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. I started realizing it today when I saw R. Stone swooping over here in his car. Everything we wanted up there is right here. The package is the same, except this package isn't wrapped up in glitter paper with bows and all. The night you hated the South. I still hate the South. But you know what I finally figured out? 
This used to be the South, right here. And it's still a long ways from paradise. But it isn't really the South. You know where the South really is? It's up north in them ghettos. But the program is the same. Ripping off the black man. Priscilla, it's up to you, baby. Well, Mama, I know you wanted us down here. But did you have to go and die? I'm going to try not to make the same mistake, son. I'm not going to wait for you to learn this by yourself. Now, your grandma's gone. Nothing's going to bring her back and give you a chance to say you're sorry. But I think she knew that. Remember what I said. Growing up is inside. Here. Yeah. Do like the country boys do. Go fishing. Now see here, Simmons. I have a firm, generous offer on this place. I took the liberty of bringing prospective buyers here yesterday. Yes, yeah, so I heard. Hold the end of that, will you? Now these deals don't grow on trees, you know. Nate. Yeah. I can't find Junie. He's gone. Fishing. What? He's gone fishing. Ah, oh, Mrs. Simmons. What? You look like a woman with a head for business. Well, Mr. Stone, you're just the man I wanted to see. Listen, I've decided not to sell the farm. We're staying. Darling! Are you sure about that? Nope. I'm not sure. But I'm willing to try. Howdy. Now, how many times are we going to have to say no to you? No problem, no problem. Sell homeowners insurance to aim to please your every need. Be happy to serve. <laughs> Who's coming home? Pecan pie, lilac blue, your tender smile. Just an old sweet song rippling in the stream. Bless the old sweet song that brought me back home. 